I'm going to be very honest in this video, okay? I have considered a separation. But if you see a rich ancestor, hmm, hmm, I'm not saying you should not marry you, but if you see a rich ancestor, hmm. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. If you're new to this channel, if you just see my face for the first time, you are highly, highly welcome. I appreciate you for clicking on this video. And if you are a returning subscriber, oh, thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all your comments, for your likes, your shares, your DMs on Instagram. Thank you guys so so much i appreciate every one of you yeah so in today's video i'm going to be answering the questions you guys asked me um yesterday on instagram first of all i asked you guys to choose a topic that we're going to discuss on and then i now asked you guys to ask me questions concerning that topic okay and so many people chose marriage dating i was just like ah so if you put this kind of thing for like like here eh because to be honest when i was asking that question i was thinking most people are going to choose finance because i get questions on finance a lot so i was thinking okay people will choose finance I just put that one let's just be like i'm asking that one uh -uh. but that's what 61 percent of you wanted to hear i'm just like you people like bad thing <laughs> anyway for those of you who want us to discuss finance and you know stuff like that i'm going to be putting out another post where you guys can send in your questions and i'll film that one later okay so yeah for today let's just jump right into the questions Alright, so guys, I'm going to be reading out the questions and then I'll just answer. I'm not going to call out the names of those who sent in the questions so that we can answer these questions faster. So the video will not be too long. Okay, so yeah, the first question is what is the most overrated thing about marriage? Hmm. <laughs> To be honest, I don't really know, but I think for me, I think the most overrated thing about marriage is that marriage will make your life easier. I don't know if that's what people think. But if you think that marriage will make your life easier or make you happier, yeah, marriage actually makes you happy. Let me not even lie. Marriage actually makes you happy. Okay, let me not say happier, but marriage makes you happy. It's actually a very good and lovely thing. But it's not going to significantly make your life happier if you are not a happy person to start with, okay? If you are sad, if you if you have issues, marriage is not going to solve your issues, okay? So yeah, it might even um especially if you have issues with your partner before you get married, marriage is going to um, magnify those issues like make it worse so yeah I don't know if that's the right answer but that's one of the most overrated things about marriage okay what would you never do in the name of marriage what would I never do I'll never stay with a pedophile or someone who abuses my kids see when I hear of women who stay with their husbands who abuse their kids because they want to save their marriages I'm just like like I can't Mm. moving on so the next question is have you ever considered a divorce have i ever considered a divorce have you ever considered a divorce have you ever no 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 i've never considered a divorce but let me if i'm just going to, i'm going to be very honest in this video okay so yeah i've never considered a divorce but i have considered a separation and <laughs> let me explain what i mean in my mind Sometimes my husband annoys me. I just, I just have this, you know, uh, I just start daydreaming of how I will just carry my bags and then I will just go and then he'll call me and be begging me and be like, I need you back in my life. <laughs> That's the only way I consider it. Not like I consider it in real terms, but I consider it like, oh, I'll just go away and then he'll now come me and beg me and I'm just saying, you know what? Let me just go back to you and then he'll be like, oh, you make me so happy. Yeah, so that is only in that way, but no, no in in the real sense of it, now nah, I've not considered it. I love you all the way from Zimbabwe. Oh, thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All the way from Zimbabwe. Are you serious? Thank you so much, um, Miss Miss M Wale. What's your take on long distance relationships? Now, okay, for me, me and my husband we are actually in a long distance relationship. Um, before we got married, he was always working somewhere else while I was living somewhere else. Before it was Wari, he was in Wari, I was in UI, Ibadan. Then the next one, I was in Lagos and he was in Port Harcourt, okay? So yeah, that's as that's the long distance I can tolerate. Though. I can't tolerate that long distance of, um, I'm in Nigeria, he's in America. I'm in Nigeria, he's in Canada. I'm in Canada, he's in UK. I'm in UK, he's in... Eh, eh, that one to me. I don't like it long term or I don't like it prolonged because... To be honest, 
there needs to be physical contact between you and whoever you're dating and if you're dating someone that you've never met before like you never met a person physically you are just you are claiming long distance and you never met the person before maybe you met on social media and then in your mind you're planning marriage and you've never seen the person face to face i don't subscribe to that at all so long distance relationship yes they can kind of work if you find time to meet each other from time to time and if both parties know what they want in my own case i wasn't just dating for the sake of dating we were dating for a purpose we knew we were going to get married okay i'm not saying it's normal for other people people are different different things work for different people but for me personally i don't like it okay so the next one is hmm, hmm, hmm. how can you keep the bond sex life between you and your husband fresh after two kids okay for me personally i feel like it became better after two kids okay it became better after two kids i think because i don't i, I would even say it's the two kids that is the issue i think it's because we spend more time together i mean when we are 10 years together this year yeah we're actually clocked 10 years together this year okay that's actually a very long time so 10 years after we've evolved we now know each other's we will not know what each other likes okay so um but what i'll say is after two kids you really need to find the time okay you need to find the time you need to you know know that okay i've had my kids my kids are well taken care of like i've taken care of them i've given them my all during the day so during the night nobody should come and disturb me okay i'm this and this is coming from someone who who slept with her kids for <laughs> almost how many years in fact it's not long it's not long since ever left our bed okay but somehow somehow we just we still try to find time during the day or during the night when the kids are on their own you know to do it so you have to find time to do it you just have to if you if you wait for it to just happen like that it's not gonna happen so many excuses are going to come up so many things are going to come up so you have to be intentional about it and find time to you know create that bond you know movie night the weather's getting dark so anyway all i'm trying to say is you need to be very very intentional because to be honest it's not that easy it's not easy yes it's sweeter now the the main act is sweeter now but finding time to enjoy that sweetness is the problem so yeah should you marry someone outside your religion despite both families disapproval my own take i could not i just can't I can't even imagine marrying someone outside my religion. I'm sorry. That's how important my religion to is. And I, and, and I don't even like calling it a religion. But, you know, my relationship with God is very, very important to me. Uh, many people say, ah, it doesn't matter. You can marry someone from a different race. And people worship, you know, your the, worship your own ways, different ways. For me, that was not going to work. I want both of us to attend the same church, not just the same, not just the same religion, the same church. Let us hear the same things. To me, it helps with that bond. I don't know how... You can bond fully with someone who you are unequally yoked with. I'm sorry, I don't know. And I'm saying this both ways. Even if you are Muslim marrying a Christian, I don't know how you can bond with a Christian when we clearly, you know, have different ways of worship, you know, believe different things. So yeah, for me, nah, it's not gonna work. And then despite family disapproval, family disapproval is not really the main thing for me, okay? You can walk around family dis disapproval but for me the main thing is me I, I disapprove my own disapproval is what is most important if it's if it's something that you answering your question now something that you don't have a problem with maybe you're not really strong in your religion or you are open-minded like that i know it can work for you then find a way around your family disapproval okay either try to make them see reasons with you why it's going to work or you go ahead without that approval. I don't know how much the approval means to you. Um, it depends on where you live, the kind of person you are, kind of family you are born into. So this question is actually very broad, okay? I can't really say do this or don't do that, but I'm just going to say from my own from my own perspective, for me, it's not even possible. Alright, so the next question is she says, if I don't dream about him, is something wrong? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by you don't dream about him. What do you mean by you don't dream about him? If it's that you never dream about your spouse, I don't know, I, I can't say something is wrong. Me, I'm a dreamer, I dream I'm, I'm, I'm tired of telling him the dreams I dream about him, okay? I'm a dreamer, I'm a very um, imaginative person. I stay in my head a lot. So I daydream and dream about my husband. So, you know, because I believe in the power of imagination. So I actually daydream about my husband, intentionally daydream about him, okay? So 
uh i don't know if you i don't know i don't know if it's wrong or not i don't know people should help me as, answer so any of the questions that i don't answer well or you feel like you know you have a different opinion or a different answer please leave the answers in the comment section i also like to learn from you guys okay what was the first thing you noticed about your husband and what made you decide to marry him okay yeah so the first thing i've noticed about my husband is his voice yeah his voice my husband is very soft spoken very because we actually met over our social media someone even asked me this question we met on social media so we talked before we met as in we, we talked on the phone before we met physically so the first time i noticed was that ah, this guy's voice does not match his look he's a very soft spoken kind of person um you hardly hear him raise his voice you hardly hear him you know talk with energy man when i talk behind that man <laughs> I talk with energy. Why he doesn't talk with energy? He's very soft-spoken. So that's what I noticed. And then he has. Well, okay, when I now finally met him, uh, even though I had seen his pictures, when I finally met, when I finally met him, the first thing I noticed was his was first thing I noticed were his teeth or was his teeth. First thing I noticed shy. So I noticed his teeth. He has very nice dentition. I like people that have. I like looking at people's dentition. Like if you have nice teeth, I actually like it. So that was the first thing I noticed when I met him physically. And then what made you decide to marry him? So many factors, so many factors made me decide to marry him. Um, uh, our, our personalities are kind of the same. Our vision aligns. In fact, basically it's our vision. Our vision aligns. I like the kind of person he is. I like the vision he had for his own life. So I was able to, you know, align myself with his vision. So, like I said, it's not going to be difficult. It's not difficult for me to submit to my husband because he already, he's going in the right direction. He's going in my direction, actually. So, it's not like I'm even submitting. It's almost like we're just together anyway. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I, I explained that well, but just take it like that. <laughs> okay, so now the question is, how did you meet your husband? So, we met on social media. You guys, you know what? After this video, I am going to film how we met. Let me just film that video once and for all. The reason why I've not filmed it so far is because I wanted him to be in the video with me. But right now, his work time has even been extended. So I don't even know when next I'm going to see him. So let me just film it um, after this video. So yeah, watch out for the video. I'm going to tell you guys how I met my husband on social media. Okay? Is doing it overrated? Asking because I've heard people say it's not as good as it's been portrayed in movies okay yeah so that's the question is it overrated no girl it is not overrated at all in fact i think it's not even rated enough <laughs> with the right person it is not overrated with the right person once you guys have you know learnt each other's reading you now know what each, each other likes and you seek to please each other it is so not overrated but with multiple partners with the wrong person outside of marriage it is very overrated for me yo. for me it's very overrated like don't if you're not ready don't rush into it like there's nothing you're, you're seeing there that you're not you won't enjoy later on with the right person so in that sense yes it's overrated how do you cope with the home front taking care of the home and the child without help um the question continues and with a demanding yoruba husband <laughs> Girl, what do you mean demanding your bad husband? You think others are not demanding? You think you your bad men that are demanding? Go and marry some other men, you will faint. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I get what you mean. When I didn't have a help, you guys, I didn't have a help for the first two years of Cora's life. So I was alone with Cora until Eva was born. Okay, yeah. So I didn't have a help and he wasn't even around two weeks of the month. So those two weeks of the month, I was always tired. Like, I was always tired. But generally, my advice would be, be very minimalist, okay? Reduce the amount of things in your house. Reduce the number of things you have to clean and wash. Reduce the number of things you have to fix or arrange, okay? So be very, very minimalist. That's my own advice, okay? Clear spaces that you can just sweep easily and clean. And there not be furniture here, chair here, this one, table here, okay? So if you are doing it yourself, um, be very minimalist. Um, try and plan ahead. So do meal prep, you know, cook in bulk and put in the freezer. If your demanding husband wants fresh food, you have to reevaluate. Tell him, oh, guys, it's not going to work like that. I uh, have to go and hire a cook. 
okay if you can hire a cook for you or a chef or someone that will come and be cooking every day then fine but with a kid you can't manage cooking every single day if, if you can manage it's fine that's for you but i'm saying it, it's not practical for me yeah in my own case that was not a problem but if it's for you it's a problem you have to talk about it you have to communicate with your husband what i noticed about so many women is that some of these things people saw it while you were dating i'm going to be very blunt in this video okay so don't see it as me trying to be offensive or whatever i'm just saying it for younger audience who might be watching me right now and are curious about these things some of us if we're, if we're going to tell ourselves the truth we saw these things before we got married that's one of the reasons why i married my husband he was very hard working okay all the times he came to visit me in school i did not cook food for him not even once and he never complained he never asked for food you know we we're always eating out whenever he was around okay so yeah um you see the signs before you get married but okay fine you still went ahead and married him now once once you get into a marriage and you see that things are not um you know working for you say you're stressed up and you see that things are not going smoothly you have to talk to him and tell him see i know i accelerated this thing from you before we got married but right now you have to change you have to help out it's not even that you have to help out you have to do your own part okay divide the housework give him his own if only if you're working too if you're not working then you know how you divide it that it won't be unfair to him okay so i'm not saying go and now give him all the work when when you're not doing anything or you're just only taking care of your child which taking care of your children can be very stressful on its own but i'm just saying since there's only one child you have you can actually do a little more housework or cooking so you can divide it while i do the cooking you're going to clean the house while i wash plates you're going to wash clothes while i feed the child you are going to arrange her things you know or his things you know so yeah you have to communicate with your husband and let him know that i'm drained you want me to die <laughs> okay you know I mean? like me i'm a kind of person that I, I can be very hard working but i can be incredibly lazy especially when i see that uh, my, my brain is not i'm uh, my emotionally i'm emotionally drained i can be incredibly lazy so i know they do that pretending you know, i don't need to pretend that one just so that they think i'm a good wife no i'm not a good wife you can't do your own part is it right to have it on your first date just a question no it's not right no it's not right no yeah no people say all kinds of things people like to make it look like oh it's, it's a cool thing to do or to each zone no it's not to each zone it is not right don't do it okay <laughs> the next person is i'm just 21 do you advise celibacy even when you have met the right man yes i advise celibacy even when you have read, met the right man okay i advise you know wait until marriage that's that's my personal advice was what i'm going to advise my kids i did not wait till i was married and i regretted it okay so yeah um yeah 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 i don't know what i was saying again but yeah would you date a man almost 20 years older if you loved him how do you know you love him because with this question is you are, you are reversing it you are saying you know that means you knew he was 20 years over before you loved him, or did you you said you did not know that he was 20 years over until after you fell in love with him anyway anyway yeah i get your point actually um would i date a man who's 20 years older i actually like older men okay so it's not a problem for me but it's a problem for me depending on the age okay so for instance if i was 19 i would not advise a 19 year old to date a 39 year old like that that's really that's that's terrible okay i won't advise a 21 year old to date a 30 a 41 year old okay that's me but as a 30 like now i'm 31 for me age difference doesn't really matter what really matters is how old are you how old is the person that how old are the people dating okay that's basically it. so yeah at my age right now my uh, dating if i see a 31 year old and she tells me she's dating a 51 year old to me <sighs> well i'm talking self no somehow no no i think i'll rather a 21 year old date a 41 no it doesn't sound good anyway i say it but yeah i like older men but 20 years older is a little bit too much for me i mean it's old enough to give birth to me nah uh nah no i no, i don't like it but if it works for you it's fine it's not a problem but for me um i would like to grow old with someone i don't want someone like who's already old i don't want someone who's already there like i'll let us reach there together okay um hey you guys when is about to fall <laughs> If you were in a marriage where doing it is once a year, how will you cope? How? How? As in, how? What are you? What are you coping with? I don't understand. What is once a year? Once a year that what? Why is it once a year? Does he have medical problems? Do you have medical problems? Is he? 
away on an assignment that takes they're taking him away like is he not around 364 days a year that's what i'm trying to ask like <laughs> is he around and it's just once a year a year or they are doing it that's 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 terrible how do you cope i can't i can't cope with it i'm sorry i can't like something has to change someone has to leave for me to breathe i can't <laughs> It's not food, but once a year I'm back. What's that? When someone says it's not working, what does it mean? Quit the relationship or try to make it work? Girl, ask the person. When the person says it's not working, say, what do you mean by it's not working? <laughs> so it's not about see, let me tell you once I've realized about women and I don't like it. And I feel like we women should stop. Stop trying to read men's minds. Stop trying to read their minds. Stop trying to assume for them. Stop trying to, you know. If a guy doesn't say something, don't, don't try to infer. Does he mean? Does he not mean? Ask him straight up. Men are always straight up about what they need or what they want. That's why I like them. They are always straight up. Ask him straight up. Like, tell him, guys, see, I need to be straight with me. Okay, you need to just give me the right answer. What do you mean by it's not working? Are you saying that we should try and work on it? Or are you saying that you're, you're tired and you want to make a call it quits? Okay, and I mean, I'm not a person that. Before you call it quits, I'm, nobody has ever called it quits on me anyway. But before you call it quits, I've already I've left. I've already jumped into the next relationship. Before you are thinking of breaking up with me, I'm already dating someone else. So that's for me, and that's how I feel most women should be. If not, life will be unfair to you, okay? Men will deal with you if you're like that. So yeah, girl, go and ask the person. Whoever, whoever I told you that it's not working, ask the person what do you mean? Okay? Someone is asking, do girls bleed after the first time? That is like the second or third time. Do girls bleed after the first time? I don't know. I don't know. Some people don't even bleed at all. So I don't know about whether they bleed after the first, second time. I don't know. But if the person is bleeding, then it might be an, another issue. It might be a medical issue or it might be that it was too rough or something. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, next person, the next question is what is the age gap between you and your husband? The age gap between me and my hobby is six years. Yeah, so he's six years older than I am. Okay. Alright, so the next question is Is physical attraction stroke attractiveness necessary in choosing a partner? Okay, physical attraction and attractiveness are kind of different. Okay, so attract someone can be attractive, but you're not physically attracted to them. It's possible. Okay, so the question is Should you be physically attracted to your partner? Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, you should be physically attracted to your partner. There is a reason why physical attractiveness. Or the reason why we find people attractive, the reason why God created that attractiveness between people, okay? So don't don't be so spiritual or so spiritual that oh I just need a God fearing partner. So even if when the guy hugs you, your skin crawls, I just manage it because I need a God fearing. No, my dear. So yeah, you should be physically attracted to the person. But I will say this, okay? Physical attraction actually grows. The more you spend time with the person, with the person, the more you the more you fall in love with the person, the more you get physically attracted. You know to the person so yeah but for me for choosing a partner it is not it is it's not number one but it's up there it's number one b <laughs> uh, okay what's your take on age gap relationships and how do you know you're ready to get married what's your take on age gap for me um 10 years is not bad 15 years is kind of pushing in 20 years uh, you're yeah, yeah, really gone far 30 years no okay so um and like i said before Depends on your age too. If you are 19 and dating a 31 year old or a 32 year old or a 35 year old, why? Okay, why? Yeah, but for me, I've always been attracted to older men because I noticed that when I talk with my mates, when I used to talk with my mates, they sounded very childish to me. I'm sorry, this would be very, very, like extremely childish, especially when I was secondary school, university. All my, I never dated anybody that was my age mate in university. Like, everybody that was my, even two or three years older, they always were like incredibly childish to me. Like, the kind of things that they liked, kind of things they wanted out of life, kind of things they used to say, the kind of discussions they wanted to have was just too shallow for me. Too, too shallow. So, yeah, I like older men, but not ancestors, okay? Yeah. But if you see a rich ancestor, hmm, hmm, I'm not saying you should not marry you, but if you see a rich ancestor, hmm. <laughs> Especially if you love him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, she also asked, how do you know you're ready for marriage? Um, for me, how do I even know you're ready for marriage, Seb? Once you are ready to make that sacrifice, so I don't know whether you know it makes you ready, but I'm just saying things that you should be ready for, be ready to compromise, be ready to make sacrifices, be ready to, you know, revelate your life. Okay, be ready to change your lifestyle. 
yes okay sometimes you don't have to but sometimes you might be ready to change your lifestyle be ready to move from your area if you want if you have to be ready to you know make sacrifices okay generally so that should let you know i'm 22 i'm a graduate and my parents think it's time for me to marry what do i do i'm not ready tell them you're not ready my dear see let me tell you something okay at the end of the day it is you and that person in that marriage okay your parents might intervene as much as they want to they can even interfere as much as they want to but at the end of the day 247 365 this you are the one who is married to that person not your parents not the society not anybody else so if you're not ready for marriage please don't do it if you're not ready to marry a, a particular person please don't go into that relationship don't even marry anybody that's not ready to marry because you are going to regret it that's just the simple truth what would be your advice to your daughter on when to do it okay my advice to my daughter is girl please wait till you are married yes that's my advice to anybody wait till you are married so let me say something about this when to do it topic okay this video is very long but i'm really sorry but i need to address this okay now i some people argue that if you if you wait till you get married to do it what if you are not um compatible and the truth is that i have not seen anybody who waited they both waited man waited woman waited then they got married and then i found they're not compatible what do you mean you're not, you're not compatible you can learn to be compatible <laughs> you can learn it okay even people that claim they're compatible before marriage most times they still have to learn how to be more comp compatible in fact before you even got married when you are doing it some of you had to teach yourself to be compatible before you got married so why not wait till you get married to do it okay and i'm not saying this because i'm trying to be sanctimonious okay i've thought about this thing several times okay did i really would i have missed up on much if i hadn't done it before i got married no the answer is no you have so many years to do it so many styles directions positions uh, 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 venues uh, everything you have so many years to figure it out so you have so many years to enjoy it so you don't have to rush into it you don't have to do it before you get married okay i've also seen people who said what if after you get married you now realize that the guy is impotent or the guy cannot you know last long or the guy doesn't have it or something that's what people used to say now the truth is that if you eventually marry someone who is like that then that marriage should be nullified because you were deceived okay not even divorced the marriage should be nullified because you were deceived so it's unfortunate that if things like that happen but the truth is that you did not marry the right person you married a deceitful person so that marriage should be nullified okay it's not a it's not a good enough reason because i've not even seen i've not even seen anybody that told me that oh i waited and then when the tita finally came i now realized that my husband is, is only or not this joro and koji see things like that in real life i have not met anybody who waited most of that i met that, that waited actually enjoyed the fact that they met they were actually they actually to them it was the best decision ever to wait okay most people that i have met i might be wrong but most people i have met it was the best decision for them to wait because you don't even have anything to compare it with so what do you mean that you're not compatible what are you comparing it with it's not like you've done it before it's not like you know how it's supposed to be so two we can learn it and you know it, it can only get better okay so yeah all i'm trying to say is that those arguments for people who say do it do it do it the arguments are not if it's sufficient okay they don't they don't fly with me okay and if you really think about it most causes of um teenage pregnancy um underage pregnancy unwanted pregnancy um abortions they are caused by premarital, premarital sex okay majority of these maybe a few might happen in marriage but majority of abortions and things like that happen because we're having premarital sex if both of you had kept your genitals to each other then you would have been fine okay then diseases diseases infections are also caused by premarital sex if premarital or extramarital sex okay if both of you we are you know um we are celibates you got married both of you are virgins or celibates you got married where does this come from okay it is only when you step outside you not start catching from different people okay so at the end of the day there are really no benefits to Premarital sex. Anybody that wants to argue with that's that person's business. There are really no benefits to it. What can make you divorce your man? I've said it before. Pedophilia, um, domestic abuse, um, abuse of my children, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to be fast. The weather is bringing aside for you. How do you keep it spicy in the bedroom? How do I keep it spicy in the bedroom? <laughs> communication, communication, communication. Okay, try out new things. We need to try out new things. Communication, keep fit. Fitness is very important. Fitness, me. I'll tell you, fitness is very important. <laughs> if you are not
not fit you you will know your body will tell you your body will tell you okay what's the most important quality to look out for in a man that you want to marry for me important quality to look out for is do our visions align first of all you have, you have to have a vision for yourself okay if your vision for yourself aligns with his own vision or if his vision makes sense then that's good okay so you have to ask him questions you have to ask ask the hard hitting questions when you're when you are dating someone i don't know what people discuss when they are trying to date when you're trying to get married what do people discuss when you're dating people you're asking ah i love you talk your own i, lo I, I love you talk your own is that what people are doing ask the hard hitting questions what are your visions what are your plans for your life where do you see yourself in the next five ten years that kind of question that me i asked okay so yeah that's one of the most important qualities okay and also if you're a person of faith okay is he god fearing if he's god fearing what church does he attend is he is he a true worshiper okay because people that used to fake it but is he a true worshiper with time the holy spirit will reveal to you whether or not the guy is the right person okay that's if it's important to you some of you are not god fearing yourself so that's not even a, it's not even a factor <laughs> yeah all right guys so the rain has reduced a bit now the next question is what would you do if your fiance asked you to contribute to the wedding okay i ain't contributing ish okay i'm not going to do that personally i will only contribute out of the goodness of my heart i'll contribute the amount i want for what i want to contribute it for okay okay except in traditions where because i know in my in my own village is the woman's family that takes care of the traditional wedding okay why the man's family takes care of the white wedding okay so in that in that case especially when i know it's my parents are supposed to you know cater for these things then i don't mind contributing but if it's the one he's supposed to cater for he should, he should cater for it from bride price to whatever he's supposed to bring to my family if we are going that route then he's supposed to be the one to do it okay i will not contribute a dime and you know why it's because i see it as this is the one this is the first opportunity for you to show that you can take care of and provide for your family this is the first opportunity for you to show that so if in that instance you are you're not you're telling him to come and contribute then my dear it's not for me okay it's not for me and for me personally i believe that couples should do the wedding that the husband can afford yes whatever his money reaches is the kind of wedding that we should do let us do a wedding that you can afford if you can afford a small wedding then fine you have two parents i have two parents you have five siblings i have ten siblings i have three best friends you have five best friends all of us come together do the wedding eat rice and go home okay what's important is that we send our documents and you know a pastor was there to pray for us that's it okay that is it so for me personally i don't believe in that contributing for wedding thing i don't i don't believe in it okay i don't is that's just my own belief okay i do not believe in it okay in the marriage yes we can contribute to make things work you know I, i'm not saying i cannot pay for things in my wedding i cannot contribute to my own wedding i will contribute things that i want to contribute i'll contribute amounts i want to contribute i'll contribute it for what i want to contribute it for it's not that you will not come and sit us down okay uh you know because i don't have enough money your own parts you're going to take care of this why take care of that mbao that's what happened as per husbands are now scarce abby or that i'm now desperate i'm looking for husband by all means <laughs> Now I'm not gonna help you. I hear of women who even borrow money, who borrow their husbands money to pay their own bride price. Really? Ah, kudos to you, independent woman. I like you. Equality. I, I like you. Co continue, okay? Continue. But me, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I, I can't. Even thinking about it is even is even. I, I like. I can't even think about it. Why should I contribute to my own wedding? Uh, you're coming to marry me, and then I'll contribute for it. It's not. It's not gonna work. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope. That part where the rain was falling wasn't too noisy. I'm sorry if it was, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video, guys. Bye.